Ever since they bought their first glass sculpture in 1986, they have collected outstanding glass art from the U.S. and around the world. Along with other collectors and artists, they have actively promoted glass art for many years, and it has become an integral part of their home and their lives. On this edition of Art Now, we'll look at the contemporary glass art collection of John and Judith Liebman. next piece we're going to look at is Amber Trapeze Man, which is by David, ben uh, ben David Bennett. Uh, he's from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, this artist has a very interesting background because he was a very successful lawyer um, and in his mid-50s, while on the board of the Pilchuck Glass School, decided he would take up blowing glass. Now, not very many people are able in their mid-50s to, to take up blowing glass. Um, he started, he, uh, all of his pieces that I know of have been a combination of metal and blown glass. And his son, who is a metal worker, takes the design for the metal and builds the metal structure. And in, in this case, there are, what, eight pieces? Ten. Ten, ten pieces. And into each piece, he blow, uh, David Bennett, the artist, blows into the, the, the blows the hot glass into the piece. Then, after all the pieces are done and annealed, he has a magic way of connecting the, connecting them together without ruining the metal or ruining the glass. Now, the interesting, th the second interesting thing about them is he's done these wonderful pieces. Um, this is the second piece we've bought by him, bought by him, and now he's decided to retire. So uh -huh. he, start, he started in his mid-50s, and he's not our age yet. He's not 70 yet, is he? 75 yet? I think he's, I think he, he's in his late 60s. L late 60s, okay. So he's had a terrific career as a, a lawyer and then as an artist. Wow. Okay. Very impressive. Okay, this next piece is called Lounge, and it's by Stani John... Maybe is it Jan? Danny or Jan. Jan, Jan? Jan. Borowski, um, and who is Polish. Okay. We were traveling with a group of fellow glass collectors in and in, in visiting a spot in Poland where they had arranged a whole um, room full of work by Polish artists. And we walked in. And I don't usually like humorous pieces. My husband is the one that likes humorous pieces, and he couldn't believe it. I took one look at this and thought it was absolutely great. Now, one of the most interesting things about this piece is that the artist, Stanley Jan, was only 22 years old when he made this piece. Now, he's in a family of glass artists. His father is a very well-known glass artist, and he's got two brothers. One brother has done a lot of glass and is still active as a glass artist. The third brother, the middle brother, has uh, done dabbled a little bit in glass but has taken over as the business manager. It's a really interesting family. The, the reason he goes by Stanny Jan is that his, his father's name is Stanislav Borowski. and is known as Stanislav Borowski. Ah, okay. And so the son had to distinguish himself from, from right. the father. And so he's, he, for a while he used just his middle name, but now he is using Stanny Jam. Okay. And then this third piece here is actually uh, pretty unique. Well, it's very unique, and it was my husband's 60th birthday present to me. And he met it as a surprise. Now, we had this rule that we both had to like a piece of glass before we bought it. Mm -hmm. So how is he going to surprise me with a, glass, with a glass sculpture? Well, number one, he knew that I had spent months designing the kitchen for this house. Mm -hmm. And we were in the midst of building this house. And he had all the plans, and he had samples of the materials. And he also knew that I liked the, the work of the artist that did this piece, Emily Brock. Yeah, this Brock. is Emily Brock. This is Emily Brock. So he sent her pictures of the kitchen and samples of all the material, and then she uh, did the piece, including, including some flowers here that are, let me back up. Um, 
Emily lives outside of Santa Fe, and she's mm -hmm. got a good friend, Flo, Flo, Flo Perkins, who's also a glass artist mm -hmm. who lives near Santa Fe. And she, she saw our Flo Perkins pick uh, flowers that are in the entryway and decided she would put those in here as well. Mm -hmm. In any case, John had then to surprise me with the piece. So he had it shipped to Colorado where we were spending the summer. In a, on a, in a gated community on a golf course. Mm -hmm. He had it sent to the men's locker room ah. so that my friends and I would not see it. Right. All the men <laughs> promised not to tell their wives. And then the evening of my birthday, he let me unveil the piece. And oh, I was that's just wonderful. absolutely thrilled. Yeah, the detail on this is incredible. Yeah. I don't know if our viewers can see it, but. Everything is down to the minutest detail. <laughs> yeah, so it has got my KitchenAid, it's got the coffee maker, it, it even has some uh, placemats that we had at, at the time. So. Well, that was a great surprise. Yeah, it's a fabulous, <laughs> fabulous surprise. Okay, we're going to move then toward the kitchen where there are a few more pieces we want to look at. The, the Higgins, <coughs> Frances and her husband Michael are, are icons of American glass in a, in a, in a way. Uh, the American studio glass movement started in the early 1960s, but these folks were working in glass right after World War II in the late 1940s. They weren't blowing glass, they were kiln forming glass, that is using uh, usually sheets of glass and forming forming it in a kiln. Uh, this piece was made in a, in a very unusual way. The, uh, Francis started with two circular discs of glass enameled in between the two. So a flat piece about that big mm -hmm enameled with the enamel in, in the middle between the two pieces. And then she set that circular sandwich, if you will, on a circular metal stand about as high as the piece and put that into a kiln. Hmm. And then the bottom drops through as it heats up down until it hits the floor of the kiln. So what she had to be able to imagine as she was developing it was how long those trunks were going to stretch when they <laughs> dropped through the floor because it started as a, something right. that, was, that right. was significantly shorter. The Higgins worked in Illinois uh, in a suburb of Chicago for most of their careers. They continued working until they were well into their 80s. Michael died and, and uh, Francis stopped working shortly after Michael died. Uh, but they, were, they have become quite well known as, mm -hmm. as pioneers of the glass movement, even though they were really before the glass movement. Right. Okay, the next piece we're going to look at is over here, but it's uh, by Carmen Lozar, and it is called Taking Home. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this one up. Uh, Carmen Lozar is another, is another Champaign-Urbana person. She's a native of Champaign, raised in Champaign, uh, and she's now over at uh, Illinois Wesleyan. In, in Bloomington, Carmen has become known as a as a lamp worker or a flame worker. She makes her pieces by using small rods of glass and either blowing or heating them in a flame. And she often paints them. And she is uh, one of the country's best flame workers now. The other thing about Carmen that's fun is that her pieces all tell a story. And some of them take more imagination to think of the story than others. And this one, the story, when you finally see it all, really hits you in the face. Uh, at first glance, this is a young woman uh, standing, it looks like some sort of farm field or something, it's fenced with her suitcase 
next to her. Perhaps she's waiting for a bus or something of the sort. Uh, when you look a little more, you discover that she's also got a bag behind her back. And if you look into the bag, what's in there looks very much like the earth around it. And then you find that behind her valise, there is in fact a hole. And the title of the piece is Taking Home. So she's leaving home and she's taking some of it with her as she goes. Okay, the uh, next piece we have here is uh, untitled, but it's by Fen Jing. Yeah, I, I thought we should talk about this piece because it represents a new, a new dimension in the, in the glass art business. Although the Chinese have done glass for a long, long time, mm -hmm. ancient times, there has been no tradition of contemporary glass art in China until just a few years ago. And it happened because several art professors at a university in England visited China to talk to Chinese art professors about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And one of the people who came was a glass artist. And there was no glass art at the University of Shanghai, which is where mm -hmm. they were visiting. Uh, and they convinced the faculty at Shanghai that they should start a glass program. And in fact, one of the faculty members at Shanghai went back to England and took a master's degree in glass and then came back to Shanghai and started a glass program. Well, the Chinese tend to do things in a big way, so their glass program is not a handful of people. It's got several hundred people in it. Wow. <laughs> and they are spreading out all over China, starting glass programs. Mm -hmm. So China is going to have in very short time, a huge number of glass artists. This uh, woman is one of the lecturers in the glass program at the University of Shanghai. And it's an interesting uh, cast piece with a lot of bubbles, and it takes a lot of control to get the bubbles frozen in there mm -hmm. at the right place without having uh, all of them pop to the top right away. Okay, we're now going to move over to the front section so we can see uh, just a few more. It's a very striking piece by Stanislav Lubensky and Yaroslova Priktova. Um, it's called Rectangular Cube Space. Lubensky and Priktova are uh, another uh, pair of legends in the glass world. Uh, they are Czech glass artists, and uh, they were the people who started the glass art movement in the Czech Republic. They actually predate the American glass art movement, although nobody in this country knew anything about them when they began making glass art in the Czech Republic. They, uh, Yaroslava Brechtova is actually the daughter of a, a glass artisan in the Czech Republic. And uh, she and Stanislav Lebensky began to work together in the late 1950s uh, under the communists in the Czech Republic. Lebensky ended up as the professor of glass at the, at the uh, Institute of Art and Design in Prague. And, and most of the Czech glass artists who followed were taught by Lebensky. The thing about the Czech glass that distinguishes it is the sculptural feel. It's, it, it, 
reminds you a bit of cubism and some mm -hmm. of the some of the uh, sculptures. It's rarely figurative, usually abstract, and a superb use of color where they will use a single color in a piece and yet by varying the thickness of the piece get all kinds of gradations of that color and it shows very nicely in, right. in this piece. Okay, we're going to look now at a piece by Martin Blank called Drinking a Cup of Lies. This is very striking. <laughs> Well, Martin doesn't blow his, I mean, for these kind of pieces, he doesn't blow it, he doesn't cast it, he actually sculpts it with gobs of hot, taffy-like glass. Um, A brave man. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely amazing to watch. Um, this is one of the first pieces, this is the first piece in the series, and when he, he made it, he made it with a glass dish here that was clear, and he expected one to put w red wine in to follow the theme. Right. Well, we did that once, mm -hmm. and the red wine, after three or four hours, smells like a brewery. <laughs> the fruit flies <laughs> come in. So uh, at some point, other people were complaining to the artist because he made a few more in the series. And so he, made, he remade us a dish with one to match but he had us keep the original glass dish because mm -hmm. this was the first piece in the series. He's right. um, a relatively young, late 30s, early 40s artist living in Seattle and, and does some spectacular big installations including at the Tacoma Museum of Glass, some outdoor installations that are just incredible. Very good. And this one is quite unusual. It's almost like a painting. Uh, this is by April Surgeon. It's called Every Day is Something Different. Yeah, April Surgeon is a, a relative, relatively young glass artist and she works from photographs that she takes herself, uh, usually of commercial or industrial uh, sorts of scenes. And then what she does is to set the photograph to the side so she can use it as a model and she makes the piece by layering plates of glass. This piece has three layers of glass, a, a black layer overlaid by a gray layer, overlaid again by a white layer, and then she cuts it. So she has cut away the top layer. Here's mm -hmm. the white, and the rest mm -hmm. of it's been mm -hmm. cut away, revealing the gray. And then she has cut away the gray to get the black. Okay. And that's done either with uh, electrical hand tools, or quite often with a wheel so she's holding the piece upside down on the wheel oh my gosh. in order to do the cutting. Wow. Uh, and the fact that she, there's the weight of the piece explains why it is in two pieces. Yeah. The, one, one of the reasons she started making things in two pieces like this was that she said standing for hours holding the piece on a wheel, even something as small as this gets heavy. Oh yeah, glass is heavy. <laughs> and, so, and so she began to make the, the double pieces and I've seen one that's actually three pieces. Yeah, that's amazing that she can do that. That's... Yeah, I think it's, I think it's quite remarkable. It's, it's the technique that, it's an ancient technique mm -hmm. if you think of cameos. Yes. It's the technique that's used to make cameos, but uh, not used that, in a very not, different way Not here. that big. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Uh, this next piece is actually right above the doorway. This is by Richard Royal in the Spray Series Primus. Okay, Richard Royal is another artist who started working with Chahuli and then branched out on his own. He's based in Seattle. 
And we have another piece by him that is kind of the three intertwined vases without the sprays. And then, and he said at that point, what inspired him was the union of marriage. So mm. the vases were the union of marriage. And mm -hmm. then he started having children. So ah. he added the spray. Oh, okay. <laughs> and many people think yeah. he took the idea of sprays from Chihuly, but Chihuly took the, uh, the idea of sprays from Richard. And we just, I just love that work. It explodes in color. Oh yeah, it's very colorful. Yeah. Okay, and then the next one we have here is um, called Butterflies and Pins, and it's by Rick Beck, who's on the East Coast. Now, two engineers ought to own this piece. I mean, yes, you take one look definitely. at it, it says <laughs> engineering to you. And at the time we first saw it, we were looking for art, for, among other things, looking, we were advising for art on the remodeling of Engineering Hall on campus. Oh, okay. We decided this did not fit what that building needed, but it fit what our needs were. <laughs> Right. Um, we were just absolutely thrilled with it. One of the things that we really like about it is that it's cast glass, but in the glass and when the glass is in the when the it's kiln, is it kiln? Mm -hmm. in the, when the glass is in the kiln, he didn't let it completely melt, so mm. that you see the um, hexagonal squares mm -hmm. of the original hexagonal squares. We okay. think it's absolutely wonderful, and in theory, you can exchange these uh, pieces, but they're heavy enough, we're happy to leave it the way it is. Right, exactly. <laughs> this is the largest piece we have, and when you think of the fact that it is cast, and so it had, that piece had to fit into a kiln. He's got a big, Very he's got big a big kiln. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. It must have been something just to get it into the house, because I imagine that weighs quite a bit, doesn't it? Well, it weighs <laughs> even more than you think, because yes. Yes. <laughs> if you think about that base mm -hmm. and imagine the weight of the, of the piece, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be very stable. Right. So the base is full of lead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you have a strong floor. <laughs> okay, we have just two more pieces then. Nicholas Africano is an unusual glass artist in that he made his reputation long before he began to work in glass. He was a painter, uh, still is, and a sculptor. Uh, his studio is in Bloomington or Normal, I've forgotten which now, but in Bloomington Normal <laughs> uh, in any case. And since he's been working in glass, he has worked almost exclusively with one model. Oh. And it's his wife. Ah. Who's gorgeous. And, <laughs> it helps. <laughs> and the only exceptions, there was a period of a few years when he did a few sculptures, glass sculptures, of teenage boys. And it was the time when he and his wife had a couple of teenage boys. Uh, the other interesting thing is that this is a double and his wife does happen to be one of two identical twins, but this, both of these are his wife. Um, oh, and he forms a sculpture in clay or, or yeah, wax. Yeah, he, he, he works in either clay or wax and then uh, he does not actually work in glass. Oh. Somebody, somebody's well, working actually... for him. Does makes it. the glass casting right. from, right. from well, the amount from of detail on it is amazing the texture yeah he, he gets these wonderful textures and and the way he makes the the, the dress uh, all the folds and mm -hmm. creases and lace around the collar and, and right they're it's just amazing, amazing. Yeah. okay and the last piece we are going to look at is uh, by David Ricci. it's called engineer one right here. <clears throat> How appropriate that two engineers would buy a piece. Right. <laughs> we do not have many artists for whom we have more than one piece. Mm -hmm. And we had a piece of David, we have a piece of David Rinke's out in Colorado. We've always enjoyed his sense of humor. Mm -hmm. He's a British artist. We had a chance to meet him on a trip to England. And we walked into so for the big glass show in, in Chicago mm -hmm. every fall, every November. 
and we took one look at this and said, number one, it's a Reiki, we love Reiki, and number two, it says engineers. Right. <laughs> so we have to have it. <laughs> oh, Reiki wonderful. likes to do social commentary. Uh, a number of his pieces have, have messages in them about, about social things. And, and this is a comment on the underutilization of highly trained technical people. <laughs> I can see that that's certainly an appealing piece. <laughs> okay, I would like to mention before we finish that John and Judith, as well as other glass art collectors, have donated several pieces to Cranard Art Museum. Uh, this supports the mission of the charitable organization Art Alliance for Contemporary Glass, which tries to educate the public about contemporary glass by encouraging museums to display glass art. So thanks for being with us. I really appreciate your allowing us to, to enter your home and see these pieces. And I thank, want to thank you for watching Art Now. Our guests have been John and Judith Lieberman. To learn more about glass art, go to the websites for Art Alliance for Contemporary Glass at www.contempglass.org the Glass Art Society at www.glassart.org, or the Corning Museum of Glass at www.cmog.org. We hope you've enjoyed today's show, and we also hope it will inspire you to explore the local art scene and to make your own art now.